Hi, this is Angela Starkman. I'm a freelance translator and AV advisor at MemoQ. I'm talking to you today about audiovisual translation with MemoQ for marketing and training videos. Support for audiovisual translation is one of the newest and most exciting areas in which MemoQ can be used to localize texts. You might have already encountered these sort of jobs as translator or translation service provider. Audiovisual material is not only the cool stuff, entertainment material for the big streaming services. Also, marketing and training material often uses video localization. We think that its volume will greatly increase in the next couple of years, and we already see the increase in the jobs that are out there on the markets today. Let's have a quick look at today's agenda first. We are going to start with the introduction. There are two main kinds of audiovisual translations available. Today, we are more focusing on the translations for business, marketing and training videos. But there will be another session describing the particularities and leverage possibilities for audiovisual translations for entertainment purposes. After that, we will have our demo. How does it actually work? How does the localization for SRT files and MP4 videos with the video preview in MemoQ look like? Towards the end, we will answer some of the most commonly asked questions on the topic of AV translation and tell you more about MemoQ and how to get it. The purpose of this session is to help you understand the main principles of AV translation with MemoQ and enable you to start your first AV translation. Please note down your questions and comments. There will be a Q&A session on this topic. You will receive an email with additional information. You can also send your questions, comments and topic requests to angela.starkman at memoq.com or add a comment below. This is the golden age of media today, or should I rather say the Wild West? Content creation from speech to text is on the rise. This is not only important for entertainment purposes. There is also a growing need for audiovisual translations for business, marketing and training material. For instance, in video tutorials for software like this one here, trade fair videos or self-help stuff. If you look around, you can see the risen demand for translated audiovisual material everywhere. And it is crucial that we learn how to work with it as translators or translation service providers. In this session, we are going to concentrate on business, marketing and training material. The people working in this area are typically linguists or project managers for regular language service providers. They know MemoQ and would like to use the leverage from the normal projects for their clients, like their translation memories, terminology lists and QA standards, also for audiovisual projects. Before we start, I need to clarify an ambiguous term. In audiovisual translation, a template is the source text with time codes, for instance, in SRT format. It is what we need to work on in order to get the translated subtitles afterwards. For the purpose of our presentation today, I'm going to call this a video template. In MemoQ, a project template helps you create MemoQ projects very quickly and consistently. A project template is a collection of settings, commands and scripts that help to create a new project where documents and resources are processed automatically and the project manager has very little to do. In the context of translation technology with MemoQ, I'm going to call this a MemoQ template.
Today, we are going to show you a typical process for the localization of SRT files and MP4 videos within your favorite localization environment, MemoQ. We are using this video to show you how you can translate files while using all the advantages MemoQ is offering you. For instance, a translation memory, terminology functionalities, automated and supported QA features, and the possibility to integrate machine translation if you wish. All in all, the translation of audiovisual files within MemoQ is very similar to all other translations, but there can be some differences. Mainly, the translation of an audiovisual files contains spoken language. There could, of course, be also some on-screen texts included. You start with a video file and maybe a video script. The source file is generated as the time text document called a video template in SRT format. This is the file which will then be translated into your target language. Independent of the source language, a template can also be created in a pivot language like English and then be translated into many different target languages. MemoQ does not assist you in the creation of the source file in SRT format, much like you also need to create files in InDesign before you start translating them into another language. There are other tools that you can use for the creation of the time text, the video template. The next step is what I would like to call the pre-translation. It helps to make the translation into the target language more efficient. Useful features for the pre-translation can be translation memory, terminology or machine translation. During the pre-translation, MemoQ automates the first part of the translation to create a rough translation, which a human translator will afterwards edit and improve. You have to be aware that the leverage can differ quite a bit because spoken texts can be different material than the printed documents you are usually working on. But MemoQ is still a useful tool for all your translation and localization needs and you might find some unexpected leverage in areas you didn't even think of. In the case of change rounds or several similar videos, the translation memory is particularly useful. TM leverage can be particularly found in repetitions, taglines and concordance between different translations, also in collaboration of several translators. Basically, you will never again have to write the same subtitle twice. For AV translations, we have a number of rather strict formal requirements. In the QA process, mainly technical details can be checked. This is the boring, tedious stuff in quality control, so I'm grateful myself if I can automate parts of it here. A typical QA check supports you checking terminology, forbidden terms, numbers, non-translatables, interpunction and other formalities. Let's now have a quick look how this could look like in MemoQ. Reminder, MemoQ works with SRT files and MP4 videos. It might be possible to convert other file formats in a standard subtitle editor. You will just have to improvise a bit and try things out. All the other steps of the translation of subtitles are just the same as with any other files. Okay, I'm going to show you now how this is actually working in MemoQ. And we start as always at the dashboard of MemoQ. And we are um, going then back to my MemoQ, where we can open a new project. And so I click on new project 
and I click on new project without template because this will give me the opportunity to enter different settings here that I might be interested uh, that I want to show you. Okay, so I have a new project and this looks just the same as with all other projects as well. And I just enter here a v a v test and my source language is English as I know already and the target language is German and it's a project for MemoQ and I, you can also enter different information here in the areas of domain, client and subject, but this is really up to you. You should decide for yourself how you want to use these fields. There is some advice here how you can use it, but basically this depends on you and how you organize your projects. You can also add a description here. It will give you here your project directory, the path to your um, project and your creation, the, the, the name of the person who has created it and the date of the creation. And if you enter that information, also the deadline. I click on next because I have entered all relevant information here. And now I get to this field where I can import my project files and I'm going here and I'm going to import it with options. This is not really necessary, but I'm going to show it to you because I want to show you how this looks like. And this here is my SRT file. It's called training video memo queue. And what you don't see here is that there is also an MP4 file with the same name um, here, but as the mp4 file is not uh, supported as a translation file, it is not vis vis visible here. Okay, I click on open and I will in a moment see the file here. And here it opens. And you see here that you have different um, information. You can see here that this has actually the SRT extension, that there is the SRT filter already chosen. You don't have to do anything for it. Otherwise, you can choose it yourself in this area here, change filter and configuration. But for a regular SRT file, this should be done for you already. And then you have the action and it says here import as new. And this is what we are going to do. So this is really not a very sophisticated process. I click on OK. And the system is going to trans uh, to import the video for me. And now you can see that it is here in our import. I click on next because it gives me now the possibility also to add translation memories to my project. And I'm going to use a project a translation memory that I have created before while testing the same files and it's called AV testing. So this is going to be very useful for me. I might have some leverage from there. And I'm going to click next again and I'm going to click on my term base. Um, I gave it a German name, meine Term Datenbank, but it doesn't really matter. You can also create a new term base for this project. This really depends on how you would like to deal with this. Here I'm got just going to reuse my old term ba base. Okay, and now I have my file, I have my translation memory, I have my term base, and I'm going to click on um, finish. And it's going to take a couple of seconds, depending, of course, also on the length of the video or of the, of the file. And now you see that I have my video uploaded here into MemoQ and I can open it by double clicking it in some sorts of um, text. And what you can also do is you can pre-translate here with your translation memory. And I like to use MT plugins. I particularly use um, DeepL for my language combination, German and English. 
And if I'm using that, it's giving me a lot of leverage uh, for the pre-translation of my files, both for regular texts and um, for um, audiovisual files as well. Okay, I have activated DeepL and I'm going to um, tell the system to pre-translate for me so that I have only to do the editing afterwards. Consumers all over the globe are becoming increasingly sophisticated in their purchasing habits. Stud so this is the video that has opened together with our SRT subtitle file in our video preview mode. You can see here that they are opening at the same time, basically. It is only very badly visible on our little um, screen here, but I usually work with two monitors and then you can have um, um, all in the same view. Now I have to toggle between the video preview here and memo queue here, but this is really very well integrated. So there is not much uh, toggling required here uh, normally when you have a smart setup of your computer. Basically, what you see here um, is you have the um, SRT file with the English. Here is the break, um, the tags breaking a subtitle into two. Um, here, this is a subtitle um, that is a part of a sentence, which is of course a little bit problematic for the translation into a translation memory because you only get your half sentence. But um, just in general, you have to um, uh, work a little bit differently with your translation memory, um, not expecting full sentences, complete sentences all the time. Still, you get a lot of, um, you, can, you can save your translations into the database like you normally do. And you do all the rest of the handling of MemoQ just as well in the same way that you are dealing with um, with regular um, with regular translation. All the um, all the two, uh, keys, all the um, possibilities that MemoQ is normally offering you is um, also there. And you see here that I have already started the translation here. And um, it's actually ra rather simple um, just to do it like any other um, translation. You have to remember that this is spoken language. So sometimes your wording and your style is going to be different. But this is, of course, something that you are used to as a linguist. OK, there are a couple of features, like we said before, that um, can be particularly useful uh, in this context as well. One thing that you see here is that you can um, use um, MemoQ for terminology like you always do. So if I mark the word localization and localisierung here, for instance, I just mark it in German and in English and I click on it and I add term in my term base and then it's going to be a term for me and it's going to pop up whenever this word is coming up to me um, the next time. It's going to be different from a linguistic point of view, maybe because um, the translation here, um, that, that maybe because it's requiring different terms than we are used from technical translations, but it's still the technology is the same and the technology is still very helpful. What I also can do, and I'm showing this particularly for people who are not that familiar with um, MemoQ, you have a lot of different functionalities here, as you can see. You can uh, copy source to target, of course, which is very useful in some sorts of um, text. And what you can also do is you can pre-translate here with your translation memory. And I like to use MT plugins. I particularly use um, DeepL for my language combination, German and English. And if I'm using that, it's giving me a lot of leverage uh, for the pre-translation of my files, both for regular texts and um, for um, audiovisual files as well. Okay, I have activated DeepL. 
and I'm going to um, tell the system to pre-translate for me so that I have only to do the editing afterwards. Consumers all over the globe are becoming increasingly sophisticated in their purchasing habits. Study okay, now we have uh, done the pre-translation in MemoQ and what you have seen just now was the pre video preview with the German translation of the first subtitles. You can see that it is very, very simple to get the pre-translation into the subtitles here and to compare the translation with um, the source in the video preview. What you see in this video preview is not only the text of the video, the, the subtitle, but also the words per minute on the left, in the left, far left corner, the characters per set second and the line length of your subtitles. Um, this is information that you are not, that you will not find in the regular text translation here. So you have to, you have to keep your video preview in um, view. Um, for me, I think it's not so problematic. Um, I just try to um, translate in about the same length of the English or the source uh, translation. And um, I personally like to translate in two stages. I first translate with MemoQ. I do what I like to call my pre-translation. And then I like to go back and I do some editing, more, some more editing in um, my video editor. But this is really um, depending on what sort of projects you're working on and how you like to work on. Um, so this is not necessarily the right work uh, way for everybody and for um, every project. Um, you see here that the project is just a normal project um, that behaves basically like any other project. You see that the video preview um, works exactly like a video preview for our video in MP4 format together with um, SRT and that there is a nice uh, feedback of the translation into the video preview just as expected. Basically, this is the way that we are working on um, MemoQ translations. It's not more complicated than that. After the end of your project, you're just exporting your SRT file again, like you would always do with your um, uh, MemoQ files. And then you can just use the file for any other project or send it to your customers. Um, basically, this is it. Um, this is the, these are the basics of translation in MemoQ. Of course, there are a lot of different features this, that MemoQ has. Um, we have the mem you, you have the translation memory, you have concordance, you have um, uh, terminology features, and you have also QA features. But this is just meant to be a very force, first overview um, of um, the possibilities of video editing mem in MemoQ. And this is why we are going to show um, just this f these first steps to get you working. Okay, this was our demo. Let's now have a quick look on the business background of MemoQ. MemoQ is a computer assistant translation environment which runs on MS Windows operating systems. There are different versions available for individual translators and language service providers or client companies. And we will very gladly assist you choosing the one right for you and your particular needs. MemoQ offers reuse of your translation through databases, translation memories. Productivity and quality assurance features enhance the efficiency of your work and help you keep high quality standards. MemoQ has a set of collaboration features for translation agencies or teams of translators. It is compatible with many different tools and formats. You can find additional information about MemoQ on the website www.memoq.com
Have you already seen my blog articles on the translation of audiovisual files? They can be accessed via the MemoQ website and offer different insights, particularly relevant for AV translators. If you have questions or comments, add them down below or send them directly to me via my email address, angela.starkman at memoq.com. You can also connect with MemoQ or with me via Facebook or LinkedIn. Okay, we've reached the end of this demo. I hope that it was helpful for you and I thank you all for your interest and time. Audiovisual translation is a fascinating and exciting business and we should all work together to create a new standard of professionality and collaboration for our line of business. Keep going strong.